and participate as a member of Malaysian Society of Clinical Psychology in 2015 and also member of Malaysian Associations in the Netherlands in 2016. Puas Sakina was also a student member of International Society for Autism Research for a year during 2017 to 2018. Since 2019, she has become a member of Squad Peduli Minda, Faculty of Medicine, till now. Before I give the platform to Puan Sakina, I would like to inform you that if you have any questions during the presentation, just write them in the chat box or the Q&A box. Uh, the committee will collect and we will pass the question to our speaker at the end of the session. So, gentlemen, please welcome Fuan Sakina. Thank you, Ayn, for the introduction. Um, so, welcome. I also have a few uh, slides on the introduction uh, about myself as well. So, maybe I can start to share the uh, PowerPoint slides. So share. Yeah. So, uh, can you see the slides, Ayn? Yes, fine. Yes. Okay. We can see so, Great, great. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, uh, Nart, for inviting me um, for this uh, session. So uh, I'm from, uh, as I mentioned, I'm from University of Technology Mara from the Faculty of Medicine. Uh, so we have um, one, two, three campuses. So one is one campus. Uh, how, how do I? Okay, one campus in uh, Sungai Buloh. So this campus, uh, Sungai Buloh, we have the specialist clinic, um, and uh, it's cater for. Uh, non-clinical uh, years, year one until year three. We also have campus in Selaya, which we also have a specialist clinic where I work. So in Selaya, uh, we uh, cater for clinical years, uh, year four and year five. So I teach medical students, uh, psychology subjects, and also uh, do a clinic uh, in, in, in the specialist clinic in Selaya. We also have a private specialist clinic. This is the building in UITM Sungai Bulu as well. Uh, so here, uh, one of our clinical psychologists, uh, UITM also work here, uh, do their private uh, clinic here. Uh, and we also have a Teluk Intan campus. So we have four campuses actually. And these campuses uh, cater for health promotion and preventive medicines for the community. So if they have this, uh, Posting, we call it posting. So they will go to Telo Intan campus, uh, stay there, and uh, and then uh, work as a doctor, as a uh, students there, and and see patients over there. Currently, uh, we uh, our hospital, our HPU uh, hospital pengajar uh, already uh, completed, and it's already operated uh, since fifth of March. No, 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 5th of April. Uh, so it's in Puncha Alam. Uh, it's called UITM Teaching Hospital. So it's, it's really nice where we have this uh, all over the campuses. This, this is uh, inspired by the Zamzam water, the molecule of Zamzam water. So this, this, this uh, icon, or I don't know how to say it, and, and it will, it will, you can see uh, all over the, the hospital. It's really nice. Okay. Uh, we also uh, have the clinics, uh, psychology clinics, and also psychiatric clinics over there in the school UITM. Okay. Uh, so I'm from uh, clinical psychology unit. So this unit is under Department of Psychiatry. <clears throat> so we teach uh, undergraduate and postgraduate students. Like I said, I, I, I uh, teach uh, psychology subjects like uh, assessment. Uh, and also CBT, okay. uh, psycho, psychotherapy, uh, particularly on CBT. And we also teach postgraduate students. Uh, we as a facilitator uh, uh, in, in, in their class. So uh, the department comprises of 13 academic staff with four of us clinical psychologists. And also recently we have three MOs in the department. Uh, so like I mentioned, apart from the teaching, an academy uh, doing research and so on. 
So I'm also a clinical psychologist in uh, specialist training in Selayang, particularly. So currently, I'm, I'm uh, finishing up my uh, PhD, so uh, writing uh, on the social skills training uh, among adolescents with ASD, uh, focusing on the uh, peers training, peers intervention. So at the end of my uh, presentation, I might also give some data on, on my research. So um, yeah, so maybe we can uh, go there together. So these, these are the topics. So the topic is the art of making friends in teens with autism spectrum disorders. As you all know, autism spectrum disorder now is in DSM-5. Um, we uh, divide it into two component of areas of difficulties. The first one is social communication and the other one is repetitive behavior and uh, rigidity, autistic mannerism, we call it. So these two areas, uh, if it's uh, severe autism, severe autistic disorder, uh, they might lack of these two component and need very uh, substantial support. So in my slides also, I'll explain a little bit more on the uh, autism spectrum disorder. Spectrum means it's in continuum. So it's, it can be a high functioning autism, can be moderate autism, or it can also be uh, low functioning autism to make it more clear. Okay. Um, so these are the overview of my presentation. So DS, uh, ESD according to DSM-5. So DSM-5 is our, like we call it Bibles. It's a diagnostic criteria of all mental illness, uh, so including autism spectrum disorder. So I also might explain on the social difficulties among children with ESD and importance of improving friendship, as well as I uh, will give some evidence-based method uh, which is the PS uh, program, a PS intervention. And um, the last slides, uh, I might also uh, put some current or proposed research that I might do in future. Okay, so these, these are the, uh, the continuum, like I said, uh, the autism spectrum disorder uh, divided into three levels. So the first one is high functioning autism where uh, this uh, group of uh, children who are in autism, high functioning autism needs only uh, 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 um, like uh, less support okay, from, from, from the parents or uh, doctors because they, they only need support in certain part of the areas. So probably uh, in social communication because some uh, children with high functioning autism uh, are lack in uh, making friends and poor in uh, communicate with, with adults and so on. They not they do not have much problem in repetitive behavior or rigidity. Okay? So level two uh, in the spectrum, so they need uh, requiring substantial support. So they might have. A deficit in verbal or non-verbal social communication uh, and a little bit on a repetitive behavior uh, and it might observe you, you, might, you, you can see uh, obvious uh, repetitive behavior that the children might have in level three um, in the continent so we have severe autism uh, we, call, we also call it low functioning autism so for low functioning autism they might also have problem with uh, academic, okay, because they, they are lack in uh, social communication and also having uh, quite uh, a severe repetitive behavior, which impact their daily uh, functioning uh, in terms of schooling, uh, friendships, making friends, or in terms of, um, how we call it, um, urus divi, okay. So these uh, group of children might need very substantial support from the parents, especially. Um, in this slide, I bring out the prevalence of autism uh, around the world in selected countries worldwide. Uh, in 2020, so per 10,000 children, so in this research, they did uh, uh, look into uh, several countries where Malaysia is not in the list. 
So Belgium is uh, is, is around 60 uh, for 10,000 children. So and, and then Hong Kong is the highest. But we have actually uh, the data by there's a small study by the Ministry of Health on children between ages 18 to 36 months. They, uh, they showed a, a rate of 1.6 in 1,000 children, which is approximately 1 in 625 children who uh, having autism, who diagnosed having autism. But this data is uh, in 2006. They're using MCHAT, so that's a tool uh, to uh, look into the symptoms of autism, which is called MCHAT. So uh, this is the only data that we have now. So we don't have a big uh, prevalence study uh, done in Malaysia yet. Okay, I want to bring uh, a case. So this case uh, is uh, about Sophie. So Sophie is 12 years old. And then uh, she has been diagnosed with ASD. She's quite shy and uh, quiet in, in, in at home or in school. She do not have close friends. She always sick. She uh, is not much involved or not involved at all in any school activities. And she also has a poor academic performance. So uh, what do you all think of the cause? Punca kepada masalah-masalah. Is it because Sophie having ASD? Or is it because... Sophie has been frequently rejected by friends. Okay, so the answer is uh, Sophie has been frequently uh, rejected by uh, her friends. So she's, she tried to make few friends, but she always get rejected and she also uh, get bullied uh, by uh, friends who is uh, like popular, we call it popular in school. Uh, so she always get bullied at school. So the cause of this problem is peer rejection and also get bullied at school. Okay, so rejection is actually um, uh, can occur uh, through multiple reasons. For example, uh, when the friend seen that a child is a bit awkward, socially awkward or weird. So these 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 things have been judged uh, by by their by their peers. So um, as as you all know, ESD having uh, some kind of rigidity and repetitive behavior. So that that might uh, seen by by their peers. So it's considered weird by their friends. Um, socially, uh, it's also uh, can be seen by. Uh, when the child trying to, to make friends, try to communicate with, with a group of friends, um, he or she might start to budge into the conversation, like interfere during the social interaction between a group of people. Uh, so that might also not like by, by, by their friends. They might also have uh, problems in behavior and emotion regulations. Or uh, another reason is that the behavior might also appear to be a bit uh, impulsive, means that they don't think before they act. So they just uh, do something they, they think that is okay uh, to do, but not okay uh, from their fr friends' perspectives. They might also talk excessively with little notice interest about, of other people because they are lacking uh, of social cognition, or we call it theory of mind. Uh, they also try to make uh, jokes uh, with no one laughing. So they think that the jokes is funny, so they, they try to make jokes. So these are the multiple uh, reasons why they get rejected frequently. Okay. Um, okay, so social difficulties among teens with ASD is, is, is a problem. Um, so in, in the teens, uh, in young people with ESD, friendships is important. Okay? So majority of teens are able to develop and maintain meaningful relationships, but there are also one third of teens do not have close friends. So most of them are struggling with social challenges, shyness, 
anxiety or behavior problem or or other issues so these um, uh, social skills actually can be learned okay uh, i want to bring a uh, approach uh, that i learned uh, during my phd so it's actually social skills that's been uh, done research uh, many many years ago uh, but we come up with like social learning approach. So these are the uh, uh, approach that we use in, in our research. So the first uh, thing that the a person, whether you are having ASD or whether you are having uh, social uh, learning problems or you, you're trying to make friends. So the first thing that you need to know is uh, you need to master is that social knowledge. So social knowledge is important where you need to know how to uh, talk to a group of friends to go in, or we call it slip in, into a, a social interaction, a social conversation uh, with a group of people. So social knowledge is important. And then after so social knowledge, you uh, should start to um, aware. You need to know where to look. You need to know where to look in the eyes, for example. So, Children with ESD uh, lack of uh, making eye contact. So, and then where to focus your attention when you're talking. And um, after social awareness, uh, after the child know what to do and then aware of the surrounding, aware of the other person you're talking to, they also need to uh, understand or interpret the social signals. So when you are talking, you have to focus also on the non-verbal communication, the, the facial expression of the person, uh, which falls under the social cognition. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned before, social cognition here means theory of mind, where the uh, child need to know how to read not other people's mind, but to read the uh, social signals that the other person uh, shows. So that's under social cognition. Uh, and then we go to social experience. So in social experience, after you master, you have lots of skills, you know the rules of social behavior, and then you, you uh, need to also know how to mix in a conversation. So you practice, okay? You do certain uh, practice uh, in school, uh, at home with your neighborhood uh, friends and then pra practicing uh, uh, frequently in, in different situations. So after you get better in this, you start to have social motivation. We don't have it here. So, but there's social motivation here uh, will make you more likely to seek social situations and become better at the uh, social skills. So social skills, uh, after you have completed everything, then you have mastered the social skills. Okay. I have two videos that I want to show all of you. So these videos are from the peers program of peers intervention that I mentioned before. Uh, these are the things that uh, peers program teach. Trading information about common interests. But a lot of people make the mistake of walking up to people and talking about random topics, things that maybe they're not even interested in. Watch this demonstration and think about what this person is doing wrong. Hey, did you go to the uh, comic book convention, sir? Comic book convention? Yeah. I'm watching the game. Um, wait, did you go there, was there? Uh, No, no. I was there as often. Awesome. Like on um, comic books? Um, uh, yeah, I do. Uh, well, why'd you go that much? You should have been. It was all everyone was there. Yeah. So, are you going next week? Um, I don't know. Um, it's going to be really good. You should definitely check it out. Okay. So, I have another one.
one of the mistakes that people make in conversations is they might speak too loudly, it's like they're yelling in your face. The problem with this, of course, is that it's kind of embarrassing for people around and kind of be annoying as well. So one of the rules for having a good two conversation is to use good volume control. Hey, man, how's it going? Two last night. Hey, man, how's it going? Two last night. Oh, yeah, I was there too. Wasn't it crazy? Watch any other sports? Oh, yeah, I used to play baseball. What else did you watch? Oh, yeah, I love football. Okay, so I, I guess that's also probably the uh, things that normally we can see in children with autism talking too loudly and also uh, do not know how to uh, start a conversation so that's two videos are a um, bad example so we also show um, the children on uh, good examples when you want to talk to a person and also how to slip in, how to start a conversation. So we, uh, in, in, the, in the session, in the program, they compare it between good and bad examples. And then they asked uh, a few perspective taking questions. So these are the social cognition part uh, to, 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 to get more uh, understand on the uh, perspective of others. So, uh, as you can see in the video, um, the children with ESD having poor in uh, social communication, particularly they uh, wanna uh, when they are talking, they they uh, having problem to switch the topic. For example, when they talk, they they don't have many follow up questions, and they also have one side conversation. They want to talk all the things they want to say but they don't allow other people or the other person to uh, ask the questions or to show that they understand what they are talking and so on. Um, if you can see on the video, uh, the one of the person with a white shirt uh, talk about the um, comics invention or something, okay, comics, but the other person is playing a game. So that's really contradicts with that the person don't identify the common interests of the other person. They start to uh, talk about comics, but the other person uh, is having interests in game. Um, and they also have the difficulty interpreting verbal and nonverbal social cues. The other person with black shirt is showing that he don't like the conversation about comic because he also mentioned, I, I'm playing a game. Uh, it shows that he want to talk about the game rather than comment. So they don't understand the nonverbal social cues. Uh, children with autism also poor in social awareness. Uh, they have poorer contact uh, and also having difficulty understanding like, social cues. So they don't aware uh, of the other uh, cues or nonverbal cues. They also have poor in social motivation uh, to to the extent uh, the uh, less the the having less involvement in social activities because they they do not have motivation uh, to involve with other people. Apart from that, they don't have any friends who share the common interest with them. They also like in peer entry attempt. Okay, uh, they for example, they did everything to make friends, but they frequently have been rejected by the, the other friends. So these might uh, lack or de these might uh, reduce uh, the entry attempts from them. They also might have fewer social initiations. Um, the third uh, point is that they have poor uh, social cognition. Okay? They have difficulty understanding the perspective of others uh, or in other words, we call it theory of mind. They also have lack of social empathy. So these are the consequences of social difficulties. When you, when a, when a child do not have uh, uh, knowledge or awareness in uh, making friend or uh, uh, 
in terms of conversation, particularly in social skills, uh, they uh, have frequent isolation, so they might have uh, been withdrawn, seen as shy by others. Um, as I mentioned before in Sophie's uh, case, so Sophie is a bit quiet and shy, not engaged with others socially, and worse come to worse, uh, they might also develop anxiety disorder or depression. Okay. Uh, other consequences of social difficulties, they uh, been bullied, they, they frequently been bullied by other people, uh, especially their friends, they might also develop uh, impulse control disorder, having bad reputation, and so on. They might also have a peer conflict, uh, pro, uh, frequently argue, uh, and even though they have the friends, but they, they, they uh, because of problems in uh, social, so they might have frequent argument with, with their friends and uh, results in termination of the friendships. So they have also poor friendships quality, even though they have friends, um, but they don't have close uh, reciprocal friendships. Then it may lead to uh, poor friendships quality. Okay, and why we target friendships? Okay, why we wanna learn? Why we wanna uh, know about to make friends and maintain friendships? This is because research uh, has been shown that uh having one or two friends can predict later adjustment in life uh, so uh, it shows that uh children who have one or two friends having high self-esteem and are more independent at school uh, it also shows that uh if the child don't have one or two friends they might also uh, develop depression anxiety or uh, having problems in school uh, and as well as life. So they might have a stressful life, uh, impact on the stressful life events. So that's why we target friendships. If you think about like um, your past or current friends, the, the, the close, if you have a close friends, you share a lot of common interests with your friends particularly in, uh, for example, in family, if you're a student, you share a lot of things that uh, have what happened uh, in, in, in a lecture. So common interest is, is very important okay? uh, in, in friendship. And you also talk and go out together, uh, which uh, this is called close friendship or reciproc reciprocal friendship okay? relationship. Um, so these are also the uh, strongest predictors or consequences of peer rejection. So these are quite quite uh, uh, intense. Uh, if if a person having a frequent peer rejection, uh, they might also uh, develop mental health problems like depression or anxiety, uh, juvenile delinquencies. Uh, we don't want this to happen in our children: substance abuse or suicidal ideations. Uh, and having ESD also having it's a risk factor uh, for peer rejection. So these are the high risk factors. So the child might have less socially competent, fewer friendship, and also less peer support. The protective factors is that uh, friendships are known to protect against victimization. So we can say that um, if you have one or two friends, for example, if you are eating uh, alone at stairs compared to you are eating uh, at the canteen with a group of friends. So do you, which, which one do you think that is uh, normally um, like by a bully? So whether alone or in a group. So we can see that a bully like to um, or uh, will focus on people who are eating alone as theirs compared to people who are eating in a group where you have someone to uh, protect you. Okay, so um, in echo to that, uh, all those social difficulties in ESD, uh, they need social skills training to improve in their social skills. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, social skills training outside 
uh, to but uh, Sushilsky's training outside uh, normally doesn't have evidence-based curriculum. Okay, so evidence-based here means uh, two things. The first one is the content of the curriculum is based on the literature on what works. Okay, uh, and then the second one is that the intervention has been investigated. Uh, and shows that the intervention is effective. Okay, there's two things, which is the content and also the intervention itself. Content is scientifically uh, proven, and the other one is the intervention itself has been investigated by uh, by a lot of uh, researchers and it's proven effective. Okay, so it's evidence based. Uh, normally, if we see uh, in Malaysia, uh, particularly. Uh, we use uh, ABC, ABA, okay? uh, behavior consequences, okay, something. Um, so ABA kind of um, intervention has been used uh, a lot in Malaysia. Uh, so another things uh, in social skills training outside uh, compared to peers, I I'm comparing it uh, with peers. Uh, because later I ex I will explain to you uh, the uh, positive side of uh, doing peers uh, or peers program in children with ESD. So often, uh, most social skills training outside often fail to tailor teaching methods to cognitive styles. So um, children with ESD are lacking in social cognition. So we need to tailor uh, based on the each of the teens, uh, each of the children, uh, and also the cognitive part of, of the child. Um, for example, looking into the perspective taking uh, questions. So that is kind of method that peers use. Uh, and also, uh, most social skills training does not teach ecologically valid. What is ecologically valid social skills? It means that the study uh, uh, the, the content, sorry, the content of the program or intervention or training uh, is socially successful. Uh, what, what socially successful people do uh, where we break down into steps. Okay, so peers teach ecologically valid social skills. So we have, uh, for I give you an example. So teens who want to try to meet a new group of people. So normally we often advise the, the child to introduce yourself first. If the child uh, want to meet or uh, go want to talk uh, in a group of people, uh, we uh, ask them to introduce themselves first. But it's actually introducing yourself is actually another, it's actually a few more steps in front that you need to do. Okay. Uh, you don't ask the child to uh, introduce themselves first because it's a bit awkward. So peers teach a more ecologically valid social skills, uh, a more organic approach, we called it. Uh, so they start by, first they start listening uh, to what the other uh, person talking first and then try to slip in during a pause of conversation. So when you're talking, there might be a a, a, a pause like you senyap sekejap for example okay so that is the time for you to go in to slip in during a pause in a conversation to start talking about what you're talking not outside the uh, information or not outside the topic lah, okay and then uh, you have to assess the group interest based on the non-verbal cues as well so slip in and talk a little bit on the uh, topic that they are talking and then after that assess the non-verbal uh, social cues and then then baru start to introduce yourself so peers teach the step by step um and we breaking down to step by step social skills on a certain topic okay uh some social skills training does not include homework, but peers include homework assignments. Uh, after uh, sessions, we uh, give the child to bring back 
or to do the uh, home to do the assignment outside the clinic setting because uh, peers teach in a group setting uh, normally in a, in a clinic setting so outside the clinic setting we don't know uh, uh, whether the child uh, do it or not so we give them homework assignment um, and also skills that are not generalized to other settings uh, a few of my slides I also will bring uh, to you um, the maintaining of the uh, whether this the skills can be generalized to other setting or not and also whether the skills that learn in peers has been maintained after a few years okay and in peers also we include parent and teacher as well as the uh, we also uh, look into the uh, treatment over time okay the gains over time after a few years of learning peers whether it's um whether the children's, whether the social skills in children uh, maintain or uh, decrease. Okay. So what is PEERS program? What is PEERS intervention? So PEERS is an international program. If I'm not mistaken, uh, PEERS program has been uh, translated almost a dozen languages. So uh, for example, in uh, Hebrew or in Israel, there's also research there. Uh, in Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, and a few more countries, and one of it is in Netherlands. So um, my group of research, uh, my supervisors particularly translated uh, the program into Dutch. Okay. It's also evidence-based, like I mentioned, it's the content is scientifically proven, and the intervention also has been investigated by uh, a lot of people, by a lot of researchers, and it's proven effective. Ecologically valid, uh, we study on what socially successful people do and break down into steps. Okay. For young people with ESD from 12 to 18, so this, this one is for the social skills training for the teens, the yellow one. Uh, peers also have program in school-based as well as young adults. Okay. Uh, so they learn how to make friends and maintain friendships. They have 14-week session of each session is 90 minutes and it involves parent uh, uh, group. They have adolescents and parent group uh, at the same time. And it's also a small group uh, of adolescents, of teens. So I want to bring the international evidences uh, where uh, this group of researchers uh, did uh, we called it a randomized control trial so our city is is, is um, the high the highest hierarchy in, in research so if you do a randomized control trial and it's proven effective so it it's, it's considered a positive one so these are from china this is from dutch and this few more uh, in us as well so it's appears uh, it's been introduced by dr elizabeth logerson from ucla uh, university so it's evidence-based method for teaching social skills is a group format from seven uh, com uh, consists of seven to ten people uh, it's didactic instruction didactic instruction means uh, you uh, focus on a certain topic and then you uh, do a role play uh, during the session itself so, uh, also parent assisted um, role play and model modeling means that you are uh, practice on the same day during the session and how to for example the topic for that day is that how to make conversation how to sleep in a conversation so they practice among themselves uh, and ask prospective thinking questions uh, and also um, after they go back after they finish with the session uh, they will uh, combine with the parents and discuss more uh, on the homework assignments and parents as a social coaching at home uh, to help the children to do the homework okay so these are the overview of the peers intervention so what what are what are the talking on 14 weeks session so um, the first thing that uh, peers introduced is 
the communication, the conversation skills, how to trade information, how to um, uh, make other people understand what you want to say, okay? how to find common interests in conversation skills, how to uh, uh, understand the nonverbal communication. Okay? Peers also teach electronic communication, how to choose uh, uh, appropriate friends, okay? identifying how to identify peer group, uh, um, which the group that you like, how to identify clubs or societies that you like, okay? and then appropriate uh, peer entry strategies, how to enter group conversation, how to exit conversation, uh, peers also teach uh, good partnerships and also uh, get together. Get together means that being a good host, or you go, uh, you being a host, you invite other people to your home, or you go to other people's home, uh, like being a guest during uh, get together with your friends. What you need to do and uh, what what are the do and don'ts uh, during get together. So peers also teach peer conflict. If if you are having argument with your friends. If your friend tease you, what you need to do, and then uh, peer rejections, how you handle uh, embarrassing feedback or teasing by by your friends. Okay. Uh, and then at the end of the fourteen weeks, they have like we call it graduation. So they 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 will be presented by a, a, a certificate, and there's also final review, and there's a party, normal party after the end of the fourteen weeks. That's how peers, uh, intervention of peers program all about. Um, so just, uh, research by Mandelberg in 2014. Uh, they study on the uh, treatment over, over time. So the after the 14 week session, uh, they want to see whether uh, one to five years later, the uh, children who part participate in peers are still having uh, a good uh, social skills or not. So in in this oh, sorry. in this graph, it shows that after one to five years, uh, the social awareness, social cognition social motivation, social communication are improved and the autistic mannerism are decreased. Okay. Um, and then we also study in the social skills knowledge of, of the children. So they use task um, as a tools, as assessment tool. So it also improved, significantly improved after uh, one to five years okay t1 means before the peers program t2 means after 14 weeks of post assessment and then t3 is after a um, few years later they, they uh, investigate again using the same uh, assessment tool okay and then uh, as i mentioned before so it's they also look into the get together so it's also improved children who participate in peers program also improve after one to five years later so these uh results from the peers pilot so before we start so in netherlands we also do the rc we also do rct so before we start with rct we have to do a pilot uh, test first in 2015, we did uh, see improvement in terms of social knowledge and also uh, social responsiveness of the children uh, after 14 week session. So we, we only measure in T1 and T2. So T1 is before and T2 is uh, post assessment. And then we also, uh, after pilot study, is quite promising. And then we uh, did uh, larger skills research which consists of 106, 106 uh, participants. Uh, we call the study as accept study. So we divide the group into peers and road. So children who involved in peers and road. Road means active control condition where we 
teach your children um, on the issues of the related to teens, like uh, sexual communication, friendship, and so on. Uh, Root and peers share the same 14 week session, but Root does not involve parents. Uh, it's only involved one group, teens group, but peers involve uh, teens and also uh, parent group. Okay. Uh, then we measure in using observational measures. So observational measures that we did is called CAS measure. So CAS measure, uh, we ask the children to communicate uh, in three minutes, we videotape and then we ask the child to communicate with a, a normal kid, normal teen. Uh, after three minutes, then we score and then we see how uh, whether they whether they have, they improve in terms of social communication, social awareness, social motivation, and so on. In our research, we also involve teachers. So teachers uh, fill in the um, assessment tools uh, um, online. Okay, so the uh, teachers, but teachers don't know whether um, the students are in a peer social group. So these are the data from my research. Uh, so we use uh, SSIS uh, rating scale. So it, uh, these are the total SSIS uh, rating scale. So in SSIS, we have uh, social uh, motivation, social awareness, and so on. So it means that uh, how to read the graph is that uh, if you see the blue color, so it shows that the peers uh, group improve uh, after um, this is uh, after 14 weeks so it's also pre post so before peer started and then uh, post uh, assessment and then after that after 14 weeks the gap is 14 weeks and then we also uh, collect another data and then we see that whether the uh, there's improvement in peers or root group okay uh, in SSIS they have uh, cooperation and also engagement in co uh, it, it shows that in cooperation, peers group uh, improve and also peers group improved in uh, social engagement, okay? social cooperation, and social engagement improve. Uh, in social responsiveness, is there a total score of social responsiveness in parents? So parents also um, assess their children. So it shows that uh, peers also improved in uh, social communication, social motivation, and so on. So if you see the graph is go down, it's actually good because SRS measures, we want to see the decrement of the uh, uh, graph in, in the graph. Okay? So it's good, it's significant. Uh, in terms of autistic mannerism, it's also decreased. So PS also shows uh, the decrement in uh, after 14 weeks session after 28 weeks okay um these are my last slides so these are the future research plan that i might want to do so it's uh, translation and cultural adaptations in malay language i think it's, it's good because um, we can also use it in malaysia and we can also uh, share with, with our neighbor country indonesia because they also share the same language and might also use in singapore so it's um, after we translated the uh, manual, we might also can do the cultural adaptation and comparison on the effectiveness of peers in China, Japan, Korea, uh, in Asian country particularly. Okay. Um, yeah, I might also share this. There's a Utah from Utah. Uh, the open uh, for registration if you are the teacher psychologist counselor speech and language pathologist ot behavior therapist and also school based professionals you might also want to join the uh, peers for adolescents school based social skills uh, training this teleconference is training by the founder itself the dr elizabeth logerson so uh, these are the price and um, you might want to try if, if you are this group of people. Okay. And I also want to share with all of you the YouTube uh, channel.
where you can also look into uh, several videos. If you're a parent who are having uh, children with ESD and want to learn uh, on another mistake that people sometimes want to learn on uh, how to uh, improve the social skills of your children, your child, so you might also want to see the videos here. And Dr. Logerson also have talk uh, on related to uh, social skills, signs of making friends during COVID-19 for use with ESD. So she also talked about uh, making friends during COVID-19 in teams with ESD. So you may also want to check out a few videos from uh, Dr. Logosin. Okay, that's all from me. Uh, I pass back to Ayn, if there's any question. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Puan Sakina, for the amazing Thanks things so and informational education strategies in dealing Sorry. with autism kids. <laughs> yeah, almost well. Oh my god. Mm. <laughs> oh, uh, before that, I might also um wanna clarify here. If, even though that I talk about the ASD uh, children, I I think peers program is also good uh to do with special special needs children. Okay. Uh, but I'm not sure whether they they uh, have a research done. But most of the research done is. Uh, with children or so teens with ESD, yeah. Oh, okay. so there's a question there. I have a little question. Does the temporary best friend friendship is caused by okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, it's training here. I might have to speak. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, so this I is question, question from Puan Madiha. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, does the temporary uh, best friend friendship is caused by ourselves or another factors from the fake friend whom we claim as best friends? And does introvert and ASD have similarities and differences? Um, yeah, um, temporary best friend friendship. Temporary best friend, okay, is caused by ourselves or another factor from a fake friend. I'm not really sure how what is fake friend means who claim as best friend. So, um, there's a, a person you don't trust your best friend or what? I, I'm, I don't get it, but. I can try to answer this. Um, so if the child, I guess it's, 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 it is uh, with the child with ESD, temporary best friend is caused by ourselves. Um, so to, to have a close friends, okay, um, you need to have a common interest with, with, that, with the other person. Okay, to consider the other person as your best friend, uh, this is where you share the common interest. For example, I have a friend where I share a common interest of uh, business. So if I like to do business, so one of my friends also uh, quite good in business. So that is how we become best friends because we share the common interest. Okay? Or you also might have a best friend. It could, obviously it caused by yourself uh, because you are the one who initiate, who want to make friends with the other person. So making friends is that if you don't want to be friends with that person, that person will not become your friends because that person doesn't share the common interest. I don't like to be friends with her because she always talk things that I don't like. She always Ajak me to go to somewhere that I don't want to go. Okay, uh, so that is the things that consider as 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 best friend. 
Puan, uh, Puan Sakina, uh, yeah. I think uh, the is Puan Madiha, it's not Puan because uh, she's mentioning, she's sorry, but it, it's Miss because oh. I am 15. She, I think she, she, she's only 15, the Miss Madiha. Oh, okay. She just wrote on the chat box. Uh, ha, ha, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, because the, there's a Puan here, so that's why I, I think uh, Puan Madiha is a as a child <laughs> sorry so uh if if madiha is 15 years old uh, and uh having this kind of issues so i think to to uh find or to have a best friends you need to find a common interest if you think uh that your factors from a fake friend who claim as best friend if you think that there's a fake friends that want to be friends with you and claim that he or she is your best friend, you have to uh, look into several things. The first one is that um, whether if you ask for help from the, the person, you ask help from the friend, does he or she want to help you? Okay, for example, if you're sick, if you're not well, if you have fever, does she or she want to help you? Second one, if you talk to that person, do you feel or you 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 have things that you want to talk to okay you have to also look into the social cues social expression of the other person if you talk something about business that the other person like about it if you talk about games or comics about korean movies did the other friend like it or did the other friend also try to find a best movies best dramas uh, that you can share together Third one, probably um, eating together. So eating together is also uh, one of the things that your best friends might also do with you. Okay, Try to look into uh, things that, uh, that are common, that you like together with your friends. So I think that's not a fake friend. So fake friends is if your friend does not like to do these three things. And does introvert and ASD have similarities and differences? Hmm. Introvert is the person who doesn't uh, like to socialize much, I think. Okay? Uh, like to be alone, like to study alone, uh, compared to ASD. Yeah. So like I mentioned the first slide, ASD having two components. So the first one having poor in social communication and the other one having repetitive behavior or rigidity. So rigidity here means that uh, you have a certain uh, things that you need to do, you must do. For example, after you wake up, you must uh, brush your teeth first, drink uh, water first. If, if you don't do this, you might develop stress or you don't like uh, the situation if it's uh, you, if if it's it's not happened that day, what you plan? Okay, rigid, very rigid person. Um, introvert is kind of personalities, man. Yeah. Okay. So to uh, the differences between introvert and ASD. Introvert is personality. ASD is uh, something related to uh, problem uh, in mental illness. So autism spectrum disorder, like I mentioned, there's three uh, levels just now. Uh, so ASD is mental illness and introvert is kind of personality. So introvert person might might have AS, kind of ASD features, but not considered as having ASD. Okay, that's it. Uh, answer your question, what do you have? Okay, okay. Yeah. Mm. Do we? Uh, I hope uh, Miss Madiha are able to get her answers. Uh. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> so, okay. so the next question <laughs> is from Encik Farid Sulaiman. Okay, um, Assalamualaikum Doctor. In Malaysia. And how far is it integrated into our education in Malaysian high school? Okay. Okay. Unfortunately, in Chief Farid, we don't have peers program in Malaysia. Uh, I've been trained in Netherlands by the founder itself. 
um, uh, when I'm in Netherlands, I, I've been trained, but in Malaysia, there's another uh, one that I shared just now, uh, which is PS school based program, which I also want to enroll in that. Um, how far it's integrated into our education? Uh, I, because we don't have PS program in Malaysia, I don't think we, uh, it's been integrated in our education yet. But uh, if I'm not mistaken, I also have a few friends in Ministry of uh, Education. They aware of the PS program. Uh, now probably they are uh, looking into it and try to integrate in our education. Hope, hopefully, uh, the Ministry of Education uh, will in, uh, introduce PS program school based, especially which involve teachers in in our. Um, in our set in our country. Okay. Upon, uh, upon, uh, there is one more question from Encik Farid Suraman that we collected from YouTube. Uh, yeah. Should I just uh, read it? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, ASD has become more common in Malaysia. Can we have peers program in Malaysian school starting from primary level? at least as elective subject or requirement module in related activities like PRS club in schools? Uh, well, that's yes. high. high you get, do you get the question? Yes, yes. Uh, okay, uh, okay. I'm, I'm just an academician. I cannot introduce peers in our school system. So I think uh, my job is that to uh, aware uh, people out there um, parents or teachers or authority to to know and to aware that we have a program a social skills program that is effective uh, all over countries and using quite a good um, method quite a good uh, training uh, in uh, that can be introduced in Malaysia in our in our education system so hopefully, uh, the authority or people who, who, who can introduce that in our education system hear this, and then um, we might also do a, a, a research uh, in peers program in Malaysia. Okay, Cik Farid. Adakah peers intervention okay, in this one? Okay, so moving on to the next questions. Uh, this is anonymous. Uh, adakah peers intervention ini sesuai untuk semua golongan autistik? This is a good question. Uh, how many uh, questions more do we have, Ain? What time do we? Sorry, uh, we have. What time? Uh, we ha uh, Puan, we have two more questions uh, that we have captured. Uh, it's okay, it's still early. <laughs> we still have time. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, adakah peers intervention sesuai untuk semua golongan autistik? This is a good question. Uh, no, the answer is no because uh, peers. Um, when 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 you are going to do peers program, you need to have uh, teens or children who uh, are in high functioning autism. Okay, lacking in in, in uh, social communication or having a little bit of repetitive behavior or rigidity, uh, but they are good in social quite good in social cognition, okay? They can understand uh, uh, the uh, lessons because we teaching children quite a, 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 a quite a high standard of uh, information, okay? Um, so, should be high functioning autism, I can see. Next question. Uh, uh, Pon, let me share another another slide, yeah, because uh, another question uh, is I mean is but done in another slide. Yeah. Share. Wait, wait. Stop sharing. Share. Okay. Uh, stop questions. Questions. Sorry, I need to stop twelve fifteen. Yeah. Is it possible? Is it possible? Uh, I think I think possible. This two simple question, and then we can stop. Okay. okay. Uh, it's still sharing. Uh, can we wait for a while? Yes. Mm, still sharing. Yes. Okay. 
baca je lah. Uh, let me let, uh, let me just uh, move. Uh, okay, it's already okay. there actually. Uh, this is a uh, from point now. How do we interact with a teen person with autism? How do we treat them? We sometimes treat them like a child. Is this a correct way? Hmm. Uh, it depends on the severity of the child. If the child is quite high functioning autism, high functioning autism means they are like uh, they they need uh, they don't need uh, much support from the parents. So you you need to treat them as 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 a adolescents, okay? But if the child, if the teen is having a problem in uh, social communication, having quite a severe repetitive behavior, and and um, and the teen and the age of the teen is not similar with their age, you need to treat them as as the 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 their age, lah. Okay? You can do actually point ina. You can do uh, an assessment. You can go and see the uh, clinical psychologist and try to look on the age of the, your child. Because if, if we do violent, we call it uh, the tools, we call it violent. So if we do violent, we can see whether the communication, the socialization, or uh, urus diri of your child is similar to their age. If your child is 15, does it similar? The communication is similar to 15. Ataupun low. Ataupun bawah. Sebenarnya, communication dia 10, uh, is 10 years old. Sebenarnya, dia punya socialization is actually 12 years old. So, you need to treat them as their age. Okay? There's a there's a assessment tool uh, done by clinical psychologists. Can we offer peers as a separate module at training or therapy center? Yes, you can. Uh, but my suggestion is that you need to be trained by uh, a peers trainers. So one of the trainers is that um, Dr. Logerson. So she's the founder and she's also a trainer or instructor. Uh, so in Malaysia, I'm not sure how many persons has been trained in peers, but I'm trained in peers uh, adolescent, okay, peers, uh, adolescents. I'm, I'm not trained in peer school base. I'm not trained in peers young adults. So I only train uh, peers, um, adolescent, peers, teens, with parent assisted and so on. But I'm, I, I didn't open any, any, uh, program yet in Malaysia. <laughs> Probably soon, soon after I finish my PhD, I might also recruit a uh, few uh, professionals to do the translation and also we can start the peers module or peers training at our center probably in HU ITM Puncha Alam inshallah hopefully do we have more question uh, no more question I think uh, our MC can continue I think okay, the, uh, well, it looks like, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, it looks like we have answered all of your questions. Uh, okay, Puan Sakina, uh, since it's already getting 12.15, uh, so I would like to thank you for your precious time and valuable tips. I am sure all of us have gained a lot of information that will be beneficial in our daily life with the autistic kids. As for the audience, uh, please feel free to fill out the feedback form for each certificate and jam latihan for UITM staff. And please also provide the correct name as it will be used to print on the e-certificates. So ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our webinar for today. On behalf of our organiza uh, organizer, NARC, uh, we would like to extend our deepest appreciations and gratitude to all of our distinguished participants for being here with us today. I hope to see you again in our next webinar on 29 May. We will bring you the topic of sexuality kanak-kanak berkeperluan khas. See we meet again. Stay safe and have a nice day everyone. Thank you. Okay. Bye everyone. Bye. Puan, jangan keluar lagi please. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Puan, saya kena stay.